That's American journalist Evan Gershkovich, seen for the first time this week since he was detained last month in Russia. The Wall Street Journal reporter was arrested on spying charges, claims he and his employer and the U.S. government vehemently deny. The charges against Evan are baseless, and we call on the Russian Federation to immediately release him. Those calls for his pre-trial release were rejected this week by a Russian court. The U.S. has now classified this arrest as a wrongful detainment, elevating its urgency and giving the State Department more resources to push for his release. The wrongful detention uh, designation was a very important step. That process, I think, now becomes the focus. Ellen Acherny is the Wall Street Journal's chief news editor. I spoke to her about her colleague, why this happened, and the message it sends. Ellen Attorney, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you for having me. I, I, I guess I want to talk about what happened this week and how you and, and some of your colleagues uh, who know Evan felt seeing him uh, for the first time since he's been wrongfully detained in that glass box in the courtroom. What was that like for, for you and some of his other colleagues? Well, I'm on the one hand, seeing him, um, I, I think, you know, there's some relief in, in seeing him and, and seeing him look, uh, you know, well and in, in, in good spirits, which we had know we had heard from his lawyers and from the consular visit uh, was the case. So, you know, you always like to see with your own eyes. Um, on the other hand, I think for people seeing him in that box was, was really, really hard. Um, I talked to one colleague um, who said that, you know, it was just a punch to see him um, in that box. Uh, and it really brings home that, you know, it just seems so surreal that this is happening. Um, and that Evan, who is one of our reporters, who was reporting uh, in the field, doing 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 great work, is in a court uh, wrongfully detained in Russia, um, and it, it just seemed very very real. He is the the first U.S. journalist to be detained um, in Russia on these espionage charges. Obviously, as you mentioned, this is a wrongful, um, wrongful. He's wrongfully detained, so no one believes those charges. Why? Why do we think he was picked up? Uh, you know, was he targeted? Uh, is this a message that Russia is trying to send to the U.S.? What have you been told about that? It's all speculation. Um, this is this was the decision of, of one person, and this is because of one person and one person only, and that's Vladimir Putin. This has nothing to do with the work that Evan was doing. He had a accreditation um, to do reporting for us, um, as all of our reporters do when they work in the field. Um, this is not about decisions that were taken by him, by his editors, by us, or about the work that he was doing. This is about. Uh, Vladimir Putin and the use of uh, wrongful detentions and, and hostage takings effectively uh, to obtain pawns in a in a geopolitical game. And um, it's a serious blow for press freedom, I should add. It's, yeah. it's to use reporters in this way um, who are doing the work that they are on the ground to do, that they are cr accredited to do, uh, represents a very serious blow, not only to their freedom, but to free expression and freedom of the press. Can, can I ask whether there had been a discussion at the Wall Street Journal about removing uh, reporters from Russia? I, I know in the case of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, we were forced to shut down our, our bureau there. Um, but there is risk, obviously, to being in Russia right now. Yeah. I mean, that's a very, very good question. And there were many conversations over many months. Yeah. Um, following the uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia uh, in late February of last year, we did at one point determine that it was too risky um, to keep our people on the ground in, in Russia. Um, at that point, Evan was not on the ground in Russia. He was in London. He had just started working for us and didn't yet have his Wall Street Journal accreditation to work in Russia. Um, but we had another reporter, our bureau chief, was on the ground. Um, and we decided to bring her out because um, the Kremlin passed legislation essentially criminalizing any mention of the war in, 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 in Ukraine. You couldn't call it a war. Um, these were censorship laws of uh, March 4th. And we weren't sure what that meant. We weren't sure whether, for example, if we were to, I mean, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't not going to call it a war. Yeah. And we didn't know what that would, what kind of risk that would entail for our reporter. And we, we brought her out so that we could take stock, talk to lawyers, get advice and figure out what would be the safest course. 
Yeah, I, I know you've been holding regular sort of check-ins with other Wall Street Journal correspondents. What, what has been the response from other journalists about this? Because, you know, this is obviously very rare, thankfully. Uh, what has been the response? Well, I mean, I think we see that it's been overwhelming, not just from our uh, teams, but obviously uh, globally, um, from reporters, from journalistic organizations. Um, this is just so clearly an injustice and so clearly a blow to uh, freedom of expression and the ability of the free press to um, to operate that I think it's really galvanized um, reporters uh, around the world. Um, for our team, obviously, it's been a lot more personal. This yeah. is a friend, a colleague, someone they uh, have worked with and know well. Um, it's just, it's really, as you say, it's it's the first time that this has happened in many decades, since 1986. It's sort of unthinkable. And I think that, you know, one colleague said uh, in one of these calls, and it's really kind of stuck with me, one of our Saudi correspondents um, told the group that, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's very personal. I wrote this down when he said it because it really struck me. He said, it's very personal for all of us. It's about the ability of all of us to do our jobs without fear. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I, I think that's, that's true for reporters around the world. That's what this, this is a real uh, blow to our ability to report from places uh, where we, we need to shine a light. We most need to yeah. shine a light. And, and it's happening at a time when these kinds of detentions or, you know, uh, diplomatic hostage taking, we'll call it whatever you like, in this case, wrongful detention, is on the increase around the world. And, and Russia has tried this before. The fact that Evan has been uh, declared wrongfully detained by the State Department, what does that what does that mean for him and for his family and for all of you in terms of how this might unfold? What that means, that designation was important. Um, that happened last week. It means that there is a special office of the uh, State Department of the U.S. government and the special presidential envoy for hostage affairs, or SPIHA, um, called Roger Carstens, who now takes charge of this case and becomes the negotiator, effectively, mm. um, with the Russians to try and secure a deal or figure out what the path looks like to a negotiation that would allow us to get, get Evan out. Of course, we're demanding his immediate release mm -hmm. um, on these false charges. Um, this, however, is a process through which the U.S. government uh, can deal with the Russian government. And, you know, we can put our, our we have to put our hope in that process. Okay. Elena Cherney, thank you for uh, telling us about this. Appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me.